Welcome to the Christ in Our YouTube channel. In this video, we will be discussing the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25 and important keys that we can learn from it. And so before we begin to discuss this parable, we need to first understand two things. That this is a parable of the kingdom of God, which means that Jesus is telling us how the kingdom operates in those that are of it and in it. And second, what a talent is, a unit of measurement to measure the weight of coinage. Starting in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own service and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Okay, let's stop there. And so this parable immediately introduces us to four major characters, a man and his three servants. Now this man in the parable is symbolic of God the Father or Jesus Christ, the our Lord. And then the three servants are symbolic of those who are a part of the kingdom of heaven, those that are saved, justified, and redeemed, having received salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so here's key number one. As this great man goes on his journey, he leaves his servants with resources. Because these servants belong to him, he can trust them with these resources. And he gave each one of them according to their ability, what they could handle. And so he's giving these servants talents or in other words a unit of measurement of coins that he's expecting them to steward then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them another five talents and likewise he that had received two he also gained another two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants came and reckoned with them let's stop there and so what do we see in the next few verses that each talent actually speaks for itself one. And for two, the master is going to return. And so we can see from the action of the first two services that they understood that they were supposed to reproduce. And as they did those things that would reproduce the talents, we see that each talent doubled. However, the one that only received one talent for whatever reason dug his into the ground. As the other two were fruitful with their talents, this servant decided to just maintain what he had been given. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained a, beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. The he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not strawed. And so let's stop there. We see that there is a reward for those servants that reproduce for what they have been given. Those servants that were fruitful with the resources that the master had trusted them with. And he came back and he saw that they were fruitful. And what was the reward? He says, enter into the joy of your Lord. Well, we can make of that, that when we go and we do what we're supposed to do or what is expected of us, but what we have been given from our master, our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God, the father who has given us a vision, who has given us skills that he wants us to go and serve him with or reproduce to bear fruit in his kingdom with, we enter to the joy of our Lord. And so when a lot of people are living their lives, it's kind of, um, lost and clueless and they don't have any peace about what they're doing is because they are not in the flow of what they have been desired for, which is to reproduce with the resources that God has given them. And so when we choose to do that, we yield fruits of joy. And when we don't choose to do that, well, we'll read on. And I was afraid and when hit thy talent in the earth, lo, there you have that is yours. His Lord answered and said unto him, you wicked and slowful servant, you knew that I reap where I sowed not and gathered where I have not strawed. You ought have therefore to have put my money to the exchange, and then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury or interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him, which has 10 talents. And so we see from the servants that reproduced and doubled their talents, they entered into the master's joy. There was fulfillment in that. But to the one that did nothing, he did not reproduce. He was unfruitful. We see that the master is upset with him. And he says, at least, and the least you could have done was invest what I gave you so that I could have a return and then receive some type of interest from the money. So what the master does initially after rebuking the slow for servant is that he takes the talent from him and gives it to the servant that had more talents. Picking up at verse 29, it says, For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. Interesting. 
I mean, we see here, right? Like God <laughs> is no respecter of socialism. And so in the kingdom, he says that it works by this. Those that have shall be given and those that do not, it shall be taken away from them. And so when we prove ourselves faithful a little, what he says is that I will trust you with more and more as you are proving yourself. So when we're not proving ourselves, we're not showing ourselves faithful a little, which is to reproduce with what we have been given. Right. Then what he does is he takes the things, the resources away from us. Finally, he says, and cast this unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so we see that the ultimate destination for this unprofitable servant was hell. He was thrown out of the kingdom because he did not reproduce with the resources that he was given. And what was his heart posture? He said that I was afraid of this master. He said that I knew that you were somebody that reaped where you did not sow and that you gathered where you never uh, straw or labored. And this caused this servant to be fearful. And he went and he buried his talent when the master expected him to reproduce. And we see that when those who did set their heart to reproduce with the resources that the master gave them, they actually did and each talent doubled. And so if something doubles, that's actually a hundred fold percentage return. If you know about investing, ultimately, what can we understand from this parable? Well, obviously, the man that went away is representative of Jesus Christ who came and died and went as he was taken back into heaven in glory. And the servants are us who have been left behind who are a part of his kingdom, having received salvation through him to make us a part of his kingdom. And he, what he does is he trusts us with resources that we are supposed to use according to our ability. Right. He doesn't give us more than what we can handle. But what he does give us, he expects us to reproduce with them. And when we set in our heart to reproduce with them, we do. And so it is quite possible to even double what God has given you. But if we were to sit on what God has given us with the intent in our hearts that are well, with the same intent in our hearts that the servant that only received one talent had. Right. The, the master considers that lazy. He considers that slowfulness. He considers that wicked. Actually, if we were unprofitable with the things that he gave us, that we cannot be certain that our destination is to remain a part of the kingdom. But we can be certain that there is going to be repercussions for us being slowfully wicked and unfruitful. And that outcome, according to this parable, is being kicked out of the kingdom and ending up in hell, even though we were initially a part of God's kingdom. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and check back as we're going to do more videos of this kind, discussing and explaining more parables from Jesus out of the gospel.